Hey, what's going on everyone? Appreciate y'all coming here and checking out this Fallout 76 video. As most of you know, Update 22 just recently released a few days ago, and upon its release, Daily Ops was officially introduced into the game. This is a repeatable event, it honestly kind of reminds me of like miniature strike missions from Destiny. They are loads of fun and extremely beneficial. Not only do they reward you with like caps, experience, stems, ammunition, and three-star legendaries, you also get rare event rewards upon completing this. Now keep in mind, this is very important to know, you can only have a chance of getting rare rewards on your character once per day. However, if you have multiple characters, then you can just swap to your other character that you play with and you'll have another chance at getting the rare rewards. So if you have five characters, then you have a chance of getting five rare rewards each day. Pretty awesome. Now, don't get me wrong, you can complete daily ops as many times as you want each day, but the only time you're gonna be able to have a chance of getting the rare rewards is from the first completion. After your first completion, if you decide to do it on the same character, you'll just get the common rewards, such as once again, aid items, ammunition, grenades, and tons of legendaries and experience. Heck, you can even get a little bit of scrip. So it is worth grinding over and over again. However, if you're just doing these to get the rare rewards, then I'm just gonna let you know now to not waste your time. Hopefully that makes more sense now. The reason why I even decided to explain that is well, because the War Glaive is one of the rare rewards that you can get upon completing the Daily Ops. And here is what the War Glaive looks like. It's a long, spear-like, two-handed melee weapon. I'll be real, this weapon looks okay right now. Personally to me, it doesn't really seem like nothing too special. But the modifications for this, oh my gosh, they make it look absolutely incredible. And not to mention, this is a phenomenal two-handed weapon. Phenomenal. I'm about to switch my whole melee build character around so it's primarily a two-handed build instead of a one-handed build just because of how much I actually like this weapon. And yes, in case some of you are wondering, you can get a legendary variant of the Warglaive too. I unfortunately have not got my hands on a legendary Warglaive yet, but this person made a Reddit post with some confirmation over a legendary Warglaive that they got from the Purveyor. You just have to learn the plan first that you randomly get from completing a daily ops mission. But yeah, as you can see, they got a pretty decent bloodied Warglaive. Only effect that I really think they missed out on is faster swing speed. I honestly think that's mandatory with the Warglaive just because of how slow it does swing. And keep in mind, this gameplay that you're seeing over the weapon isn't from a melee build character. So that means all of the slugger perk cards aren't being used for 60% extra damage, and Incisor isn't being used, as well as most importantly, Martial Artist isn't being used either. And that gains you, in case you don't know, an additional 30% faster swing speed, which like I mentioned before, getting faster swing speed on the Warg Wave, I feel is a must, because it is a slow swinging weapon, but it can hit like a truck. Alright, so now since you all know how to get the War Glaive plan, I guess I should go ahead and explain real quick for those of you that don't know where to get the modifications for the War Glaive at. You can get them over at Vault 79. In Update 22, Bethesda added these modifications as well in Vault 79. You just have to go over to Regs, which he's the dude over here on the left hand side inside this place. But yeah, as you can see, you scroll down. That little brat is a pain in the ass, but we just call him Peter for short. You will find some new modifications at the bottom here. We got the cryo, the flaming, the plasma, and lastly, the shock blade. So in total, if you're wanting to get all these modifications, they're going to cost you 800 gold bullion. So I thought this would be beneficial to make because this is a pretty large investment. So yeah, to get a little bit more into these modifications, the cryo will make targets freeze, causing them to have reduced movement speed for three seconds. It also adds cryo damage. For the flaming modification, it'll make it so targets will burn for five seconds, and it'll also give you additional fire damage. And as for the plasma blade, you'll get energy damage and plasma crit effects. And lastly, up here for the shock blade modification, this will give you, of course, electrical damage. 
the modifications I feel really make this weapon unique. There's not many other weapons out there at the moment that require gold bullion to acquire the mods. Overall, this can be genuinely a great two-handed weapon. So if you are maybe debating on switching up your build to two-handed, I'd say now is definitely the time with this being in the game. Or heck, maybe you're just looking for a two-handed weapon in general. This is definitely one that you might want to try out. It could suit your fancy. I don't know why I just said that. I don't ever say suit your Oh, well, screw it. I'm leaving it in there. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. It may be something that will suit your play style. But yeah, anyways, here are the damages that we're looking at without using any melee perk cards that buffs the weapon's damage such as like all the sluggers that can increase it by 60%. We're looking at starting off with the non-modified version, 328 damage. Now it's about the same with the modifications too. As you can see, if we go up here to the plasma one, we're dealing at 164 ballistic and 170 energy with each swing. So 334 damage, a little bit more than the 328 we were looking at with the regular one. Anyways, if we go up to the freezing one, which is one of my favorites just because it slows down the enemy. It's so nice because you already attack slow with the ward wave. So being able to freeze the enemy to make them attack slow as well, it's awesome. But anyways, the damage that we're looking at with the freezing one, we're dealing the same thing. 334 total damage. Anyways, moving up to the flaming one, we're doing the same thing as well pretty much. Except for the additional fire damage each second when we catch the enemy on fire. And lastly, the electrified one, which once again, we're doing out the same thing too. It's just your preference on what modification you're really wanting to use. Like I said, the freezing one though, it's pretty good to use with this. I mean, yeah, you can get the war glaive to attack faster by using martial artist and getting faster swing speed on it, but still having that cryo damage and freezing the enemy to make them attack slow for a little bit of time is extremely handy because you're able to land more hits without having to worry about them continuing to attack you as fast and mess up your attack in the process. Also, something that I think some of you might want to know is that you can't drop nor trade the Warglaive. It's like any other gold bullion weapon. I mean, technically we didn't purchase this with the gold, but the modifications require gold. We get this, once again, from Daily Ops. We don't purchase this for gold whatsoever. It's just an absolute random reward. I'm definitely happy Bethesda decided to add this two-handed weapon because I've been wanting to make a new build. Now I'm switching around my melee character, so its playstyle will be based around two-handed weapons. Anyways, if you're going to be crafting this yourself, it's going to be requiring 8 aluminum, 10 black titanium, 8 circuitry, 14 rubber, and lastly 15 steel. And I know what some of you may be thinking, can you craft this as a legendary variant using legendary modules? And the answer is no. Once you learn to plan, you'll just be finding it randomly around the world, just like how the fixer and the bear arm works. You know, once you learn their plans, it's now a part of your RNG loot table. So there's a chance you'll be able to get the legendary war glaive from the purveyor or possibly from doing events or something, like completing the daily ops. But uh, yeah, lastly up here that I wanted to go over that I think some of you may be curious, I know I was, on what it looks like in first person. And well, starting off with the regular war glaive, here's what that looks like. Anyways, here's what the freezing variant looks like. Yeah. Next up, I have for you the flaming one. Yeah. Here's the electrified one. Yeah. And lastly, here is what the plasma one looks like in first person. Yeah. I figured I would add this preview because why not? I already showed a preview of all of them in third person. Thought some of you may be curious about what they look like in first. But yeah, I guess that's about wrapping up this video, guys. Hope you found this enjoyable, and good luck to all of you that are trying to get your hands on the War Glade plan so you can officially get a legendary variant. And by the way, before I completely wrap this up, if you did find this enjoyable, please consider leaving a like. That's always greatly appreciated. But as always, totally up to you if you want to take the time to support or not. Just like leaving a friendly reminder at the end of it. Just like leaving a friendly reminder at the end of my videos. I'm out of here though, everyone. Thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Peace.